the games are moving a little bit faster than normal. That's because players are on the clock. The application of this strict shot clock use in minor league baseball has removed 20 minutes off game times, which has sped up the pace without showing any proven effect on the scoreboard. This has set the stage for Major League Baseball to implement a shot clock in the 2023 season. But will this be good for Major League Baseball? Let's take a closer look at the opinions of experts and a little bit of history and logic. But first, do you know what a pitch clock really is? If you answered no, then listen to this. It's simply just a countdown of numbers literally warning you that you have only a few seconds left to pitch the ball at your opponent. It seems that baseball is caught up finally with the era of technology where everyone actively finds ways to shorten everything. That sounds fast. What did it do to the ball games with a 15 second pitch clock? Brian, there is zero dead time. This is why TikTok has been a massive hit and how the same disease of short attention span may have creeped into baseball too. And pundits and other stakeholders are wondering if this is good for the game. Players like the Nationals pitcher Max Scherzer is certainly not pleased with a system that is looking like what has come to stay. Max had said, I know as players that's something that MLB is trying to negotiate. I don't think there's a negotiation here. As players, it just shouldn't be in the game. Having a pitch clock, if you have ball strike implications, that's messing with the fabric of the game. There's no clock in baseball, and there's no clock in baseball for a reason. However, for years, MLB has fiddled with the idea of implementing shot clocks in an effort to speed up games and the pace of play without compromising the run scoring environment. With a faster pitch timer, a limit on the number of times a pitcher can get off, and ball and strike penalties for batters and pitchers, we just had a pitch clock violation called on DeYoung. MLB may have found the balance that'll hit major league ballparks next season and address average game times that skyrocketed last season to 3 hours 11 minutes. So far in 2022, MLB games are 3 hours and 10 minutes long, though that number is expected to increase as the weather warms and scoring increases. In 2018, Major League Baseball proposed to the Players Union the implementation of an 18-second clock when there were no people on base and 20 seconds with runners on base. In March 2019, the Majors decided not to install the clocks until 2022 at the earliest. But let us look at some facts of the time span of minor league baseball games already using the shot clock. Don't worry, it's not boring, we promise. During the first 132 minor league games that included a 14 second clock with the bases empty, an 18 second clock with runners, and penalties for fouled pitchers and batters, the average game time was 2 hours 39 minutes. But in a control set of 335 games without the clock, games lasted an average of 2 hours and 59 minutes, about the same average of 3 hours and 3 minutes in more than 5,000 unclocked games during the 2021 season. More than a third of the minor league games during the three-day sample with the clock finished in less than 2 hours and 30 minutes, including one game that finished in 1 hour 59 minutes and another in 2 hours. 27% of the games fell within the 2 hours 30 minutes to 2 hours 40 minute range, almost three times the percentage in 2021. Only 15% of games exceeded 3 hours, compared to 52% of games in the last season without a stopwatch. The game time was reduced and the scoring affected a little bit, with the unclocked test set producing 5.13 runs and 16.1 hits per game, while the clocked games featured 5.11 runs and 15.9 hits. In 2021, the pitch clock was also tested in the Low A West League, which shaved off the average length of a game from 9 innings to 2 hours and 41 minutes from the usual average of 3 hours 2 minutes without its use. A countdown at 15 seconds is made without men on the bases and 17 when there are runners on the trails. There's a maximum wait of 30 seconds between the end of one batter's turn and the beginning of the next and between each half inning or to change the pitcher, a break of 2 hours 15 minutes is pronounced. But right here in Major League Baseball, the average length of a 9 inning game is 3 hours 10 minutes 7 seconds during the regular season, and in the postseason, the average grew to 3 hours 37 minutes 13 seconds, and in the World Series, it rose to 3 hours 37 minutes 59 seconds. 
the numbers don't lie. MLB's Executive Vice President Morgan Sort, who is in charge of the rule changes, said, We're encouraged by the early results with the stopwatch, but in terms of the pace and pacing of the games and the style of play. But here are some issues. The 14 and 18 second timers are the most aggressive since MLB first played with a shot clock during the Arizona Fall League in 2014. In the first 132 games with it, umpires assessed 259 infractions, 73 automatic strikes for batters who were not ready when the clock reached the 9 second mark, and 186 automatic balls for pitchers who did not throw a pitch before the clock expired. The combination of the clock and the limitations of two shots to first off the mound, with a third causing an automatic bulk, has also caused an 18% increase in stolen base efforts, with nearly three attempts per game with a clock on this place compared to 2.51 per game with no stopwatch last season. Major League Baseball teams averaged 1.2 stolen base attempts per game last season, the lowest number since 1964. But it's not all that bad. It'll take a few adjustments as Phoenix Sanders of Tampa Bay clearly states, quote, at two seconds, it's pitch or pick. Most guys want to pitch. Hitters who can run are starting to time that. We're taught to hold the ball, but right now we only have a certain amount of time to hold it. In the future, hitters may figure it out. But to get a clearer idea of the problems that the new measure could cause, in 2017, more than 30% of the pitchers who made life in the major leagues took more than 20 seconds between pitches. Some of the slowest were Alex Cobb with 26.4 seconds, Chris Archer with 26.3, and Jeremy Hellickson with 25.2. Some veteran pitchers are concerned that what they were used to will suffer a slack as they tend to gather more steam on the ball's trajectory by first starting on the mound. But some of these players, like the Venezuelan Odubel Herrera, deliberately slows the play of the game. Other notable MLB players that will struggle with the stopwatch are David Price of the Boston Red Sox and Japan's Yu Darvish of the Chicago Cubs, two of the slowest pitchers right now. What's funny is that there is already a written rule about pitching and time, but this rule is yet to be implemented. Rule 8.04 of the Major League Baseball rulebook states, when the bases are unoccupied, the pitcher shall deliver the ball to the batter within 12 seconds of receiving the ball. Each time the pitcher delays the game by violating this rule, the umpire must mark a ball. Furthermore, the 12 second time begins when the pitcher is in possession of the ball and the batter is in the batter's box, attentive to the pitcher. Time ends when the pitcher releases the ball. Club officials said they were encouraged by experiments with a pitch clock this season in the minors, and participants in this week's general manager meeting in the state of South Carolina have been in favor of adopting a countdown between each pitch in order to speed up the pace of the game. Commenting on this, Seattle President of Baseball Operations Jerry DePoto said, The pitch clock has always been something I've been interested in. It's something that we've slowly implemented over time in baseball, and I think it has the potential to be a really positive thing for the pace of play and the action that we see on the field. And that's what we try to do as an industry. The proposal therefore stands, and Major League Baseball has the power to collectively affect the rule changes on the field so long the union members are given a year's notice. When Rob Manfred became Major League Baseball Commissioner in 2015, he was taken with several duties, but it is the changes in the pace of the game that has taken more time from the boss. And from the look of things, his efforts are finally paying off as we'll be seeing the full implementation of the pitch clock come next season. Be sure to check out Baseball Plus for more incredible baseball videos. See you there.